for those of you who are older, I know you can remember times when you were told that you couldn't do something because you were too young. And for those of you who are kids, I know that you hear this often. Well, at least I do. But sometimes we shouldn't wait. Sometimes we should act now. When I was nine years old, I told my mom that I wanted to go volunteer at the homeless shelter. She said, okay, you can do that later. Now just focus on being a nine-year-old. But I wasn't your typical nine-year-old because of two reasons. The first reason is that I didn't have a hobby to look forward to every day. And believe me, I've tried everything. I've tried everything from hip hop, to hula, to ballroom dancing, to theater, to musical theater, to voice lessons, to band, to orchestra, to various sports, to cheerleading, and the list goes on. So my routine was to go to school, come home, do my homework, and repeat. And the second reason is that I had to watch my own grandma become homeless. When I was eight years old, we had gotten kicked out of our apartment. And while my mom and I had a friend's house to go to, my grandma didn't. So she ended up at the Institute for Human Services. And if you know the relationship between my grandma and me, we are like best friends. Being raised by a single mom, my grandma was always there when my mom couldn't be. This is a picture of me at an interview at Hawaii News Now, and my grandma was right there to support me. So after my grandma got back on her feet, she did what was so natural for her, show her appreciation. She gave back to all the organizations that had helped her out, and still does to this day. This was the impetus for me wanting to help these organizations also. So I knew that I couldn't take no for an answer. So I decided that I would start a food and recycling drive with a couple of other fourth graders at my school. And all together, we raised over $700 from the recycling drive and over 800 pounds of food. And this was a huge accomplishment for me. And it was this one project that taught me how giving back feels so fulfilling. So that summer, I decided I would help to organize a cookbook to raise money for my school's literacy program. I helped to collect recipes, find the books, recruit artists to design the book, promote the book on various news and radio stations, and sell the books themselves. I also helped to organize a walkathon to raise healthy initiatives as well as to promote the book. All our efforts combined totaled to an amount of over $2,000. And it was this project that taught me that I, I could make even bigger differences. So one day, I accompanied my grandma and a couple of other senior citizens to Leahi Hospital, where they volunteered every Wednesday to sing, dance, feed, and talk story with the patient. So I accompanied her, and it was one of the best experiences of my life, seeing over 30 patients in their wheelchairs just crowding around us smiling, and for some of them, even singing along. So I continued to do this every Wednesday. I took two buses after school and went to Leahi Hospital and did what I love to do, perform. I finally found that I could take my love of performing and use it to doing good for others. So in May of, so in May of seventh grade, something totally unexpected happened. I was named Hawaii's top youth volunteer in the annual Prudential Spirit of Community Awards. And this was totally unexpected. I never knew that an award existed and that I would even get one for doing something that I love to do. So along, I applied for this award just as a mandatory assignment for my leadership class at Washington Middle School. I applied with the intent of getting an A in the class not winning the award. And two great things came out of it. I got an A in the class and I won the award. So along with this award came with a lot of publicity to various news and newspapers. And I also had the opportunity to meet some incredible people locally, including Mayor Mufi Hanneman. 
as well as Condoleezza Rice. This is a picture of me shaking hands with Condoleezza Rice in the awards ceremony at Washington, D.C. So I had the opportunity to meet Mayor Mufi Hanuman, and I was extremely excited to meet him, mainly because of the reason that he graduated my dream school, Iolani. So when he asked me what high school I wanted to go to, I proudly told him, well, I really want to go to Iolani. And he told my mom, I really think you should put in an application for her for Iolani. I'm sure they would love having Hawaii's top youth volunteer. And so my mom was convinced, and the rest was history. And it was all thanks to this award with the help of Mayor Mufi Hanneman. I also had the opportunity to meet local legislators, which came into handy currently, because I was able to obtain an internship at the state capitol simply by saying, hi, Senator, do you remember me? You gave me an award a couple years ago. <laughs> so in May, I was on my way to Washington, DC. I was excited to go to Washington, D.C. to explore the wonderful city, as well as to accept the award. But honestly, I was more excited to fly on a plane, since I completely forgot how flying felt like. This was my very first time in the mainland, and my very first time flying since I was six. And yes, the excitement soon turned into boredom after I realized that I was only going to be staring at clouds for the next eight hours. So while in Washington, D.C., I met with 101 other amazing young honorees who started projects ranging from building schools in Africa to preparing care packages for deployed soldiers. And it was on this trip that I became really close to these kids. And they empowered me to do what I originally wanted to do, help the homeless, but this time make a bigger impact. So my first idea was to go and tell my mom that I wanted to start a nonprofit. So I came home from my trip and said, Mom, with the prize money I received from this award, I'm going to start a nonprofit. And she looked at me like I was crazy and said, absolutely not. So I decided I would just help to feed the over 300 homeless people at my church and help out at local food banks and homeless shelters. But I felt that I wanted to do more. So I pitched to a teacher that I would just start asking for donations for the homeless shelter until she told me that was illegal. <laughs> so then I decided I would go under an umbrella organization called Random Kid, and my nonprofit was officially registered in June of 2010. So that was how Hawaii's Future Isn't Hungry was formed. So my initial goal with my nonprofit was to raise a whopping $10,000 before I graduated high school. Did anyone think it was possible? No. They would say, well, your parents are going to do all the work for you. And I would say, well, my mom wasn't in supportive of the idea in the first place, so I don't think that's going to happen. They would then say, well, then your parents would donate all the money to your organization. And then I would say, I'm raised by a single mom who's unemployed and dropped out of high school as a freshman, and I don't even know who my dad is. So I don't think that's going to happen either. And then they would say, well then, I guess you just won't make an impact. And I worked hard just so I could prove them wrong. So my very first project was to collect school supplies for children living in low-income housing complexes. So I started off with the goal of 300 supply kits. And I thought this was attainable. So I spent the whole summer trying to collect donations. And at the end of the summer, I raised 30 supply kits. I thought maybe what adults were telling me was true. Maybe I couldn't make an impact. Maybe I had to wait until I was older. But I figured that I didn't want all my hard work to go to waste. So I did the same project the next year. And this time, I didn't do anything different. But this time, I had reached my goal of 300 supply kits. And it was after this project that I, I felt satisfied. But I wasn't quite sure if adults would still take me seriously when I said that I had a nonprofit. So I started other campaigns, including helping to feed the homeless, as well as to talk about nutrition and do monthly cooking demonstrations to kids living in low-income housing complexes to teach them about nutrition. 
as well as raising money for the pediatric trauma program who helps to train doctors who deal with pediatric trauma. Or collect books for various schools around the world, including in Gambia, Nepal, Cambodia, around the US, and in our local community. Including raising money for malaria nets and collecting, Chris and collecting Christmas presents for disadvantaged youth. It was all these efforts combined that make Hawaii's Futures in Hungary what it is today. And in the two years and 10 months that our organization has been up and running, we have surpassed our initial goal of $10,000. But it hasn't been just by one or $2,000. It hasn't even been by $10,000. No, it has been by, that's the picture, $503,000, bringing our total goal $513,000. And this might seem like a great success to you, but I assure you that there are many other youth out there who are creating much more bigger impacts and are raising a lot more money than this. For example, Alexandra Scott, who started the world famous Alex's Lemonade Stand and raised over $1 million for cancer research by the time she passed away with cancer herself at the age of eight. And her organization still runs an average of 2,000 lemonade stands per day. Or Ryan Hreliak, who completed 667 projects in 16 countries, bringing clean water and sanitation to over 714,000 people worldwide. Or Talia Lemon, who raised over $10 million for Hurricane Katrina at the young age of 10 by rallying youth from all across the globe. But we are just a few. Out of the 41 million youth living in America, the most privileged country in the world. And if all of us just turn our passions into doing good for others, our world would be a much better place. And it doesn't matter if you think that you can only make a small impact. It doesn't matter if you impact one person or your whole community or raise $1 or $10 million. Because every small impact counts. After all, you can't reach the million dollar goal without having people helping you to collect every single dollar of it. And it doesn't matter what your passion is. If it's sports, you can hold a sporting event and collect pledges and donate that money to charity. And if your passion is art, you can auction off a piece of artwork or create a piece of art to raise awareness about a cause. And if it's performing, you can use your talents to bring smiles to patients at a hospital or perform at a charity fundraiser. I don't care what it is you do and how good you are at it. All I all that I care about is that you do something that matters because that is what is going to make you feel fulfillment in life and bring you happiness, knowing that you brought happiness to others. And don't even sell yourself short. You have the power to do anything. After all, as Michelangelo stated, the greater danger in life is not in aiming too high missing is not in aiming too high and falling short, but in aiming too low and achieving our mark. And adults, next time a kid comes up to you with an idea, no matter how outrageous it sounds, think it through because it might actually be a really good idea. You might even be surprised. So I challenge all of you to unleash the power inside of you. Because that is what we need in this world to make our world go round. Thank you. <laughs>